Now, earlier today, I had the opportunity to speak to a candidate who is going to be running a primary uh, challenge against Heidi Heitkamp of North Dakota. His name is Dustin Pyre, and uh, let's uh, let's take a look at that interview. Uh, well, yeah, my name is uh, Dustin Pyre. I'm a uh, wildland firefighter. Uh, I started fighting fires in 2007. Um, I'm a father. I have uh, two children. Uh, Noah is uh, six years old and Zion is two. Um, I'm married. My wife's name is Ashley. We live in uh, Driscoll, North Dakota, which is a community of 30 people. And I have decided to uh, make a primary challenge against Heidi Heidkamp and uh, uh, shake up the establishment a little bit here in North Dakota, uh, hopefully bring out more people to our convention and uh, our uh, district convention here in District 28. Mm -hmm. What was the reason that you wanted to run against Heidkamp? Uh, what was one of the main reasons? Like, uh, well, it's, you know, the Democratic Party, uh, to believe in democracy, we have to engage in democracy. We have to hold our uh, counted officials. We have to hold them accountable. And um, it's basically to get people to understand that uh, we can't just let the let anybody, Democrat or Republican, uh, walk through the primary. And in North Dakota, on the Democratic side, there's been a, a, not a whole lot of participation. And I believe this is a way to bring people out of the woodworks, uh, bring people to the convention in Grand Forks, and uh, get more people involved and let people know that there is an alternative to Heidi Heidkamp. And um, uh, let the 64% of people that supported Bernie Sanders know that um, there, there's an alternative here. Somebody who's not going to take corporate money, somebody who's uh, going to stand up for the people and uh, engage in direct, direct democracy. All right. So tell me about some of the positions. Now, you're a Bernie Sanders guy. And, uh, you know, so, so I, I'm, you're in the favor of, of, of universal health care uh, living wage, right? Um, what about your stance on money and politics? Um, yeah, money and politics. Uh, this last session, I lobbied at the state capitol here for uh, the uh, Wolfpack initiative that would call for a limited state convention to address campaign finance and have uh, free and fair elections. Uh, the Republican supermajority shot that down. Um, a person that I work with a lot is Marvin Nelson. He was the Democratic uh, governor candidate. He brought the bill forward and um, yeah, like I say, got shot down and it's it's time to let people know that, that there is a party, people within the Democratic Party that want fair and free elections, people that want to uh, uh, address the issue of campaign finance. When you have super PACs giving to both sides and uh, the heavy insurance lobby, the carbon lobby, and all these groups that are basically funding, divide and conquer the people, um, it has to stop, and it has to stop somewhere, and we need somebody to stand up and, and go forward with this grassroots um, uh, revolution uh, within politics. Absolutely, man. Uh, okay, so again, you're, you're writing against Heidi Heitkamp. So there's a lot of people that would say North North Dakota, a progressive, somebody like Bernie Sanders or Bernie Sanders uh, candidate, can't win in some in a place that's so conservative. Now, what would you say against that? Um, well, I'd say you know right now uh, it's it's getting people engaged in the process. Um, I don't think people understand that there is a, a district convention where all the districts will have a vote to see which candidate they get behind. There will then be a state convention, which we need the 64% that supported Sanders to come back and come to convention and let the party know that um, the future of the Democratic Party in North Dakota is progressive. And if people say that progressives can't win in North Dakota, I say I say Bernie or bust. I say it's it's time to, you know what, if, if we're going to play politics to where we want... Uh, Republicans to vote for us or this and that. Um, I, I don't agree with that. I, I think that we should uh, stop wielding to the corporations and the lobbyists, like I say, and it, it's, it's time to get people involved and, and, and get her done.
Yeah. And look to the people that say that Bernie Sanders is the most popular politician in America. It's kind of hard to push back against that and say, no, no, yeah, somebody who's backed by Bernie Sanders has no chance of winning anywhere. When we've seen in a lot of different races, and I've talked about these, um, for example, Rob Quist barely lost by six points, guy in Kansas barely lost by seven points in very, very he heavily red Republican districts. And so, yeah, it is possible if the party would actually get behind those progressive values. So when it comes to the party, how have you been received by the local Democratic Party? Um, well, it's it's not without its challenges, of course. Um, the Democratic Party in North Dakota is a minority party. Right. Uh, we don't hold many seats in our state legislation. Um, and really the rural districts like mine, District 28, have really been left out. Um, they haven't really been reached out to. And, and that's kind of why Bernie Sanders won is because these districts are wide open and the, the Sanders people just came in and, and took, the, took the caucus by storm last year. And um, I, I think that if those people, more of those people, because some of them have stayed, some of them have become chairs of their district mm -hmm. like myself, um, some of them have stepped up to the plate. But when the, the Dem NPL platform in North Dakota says 15 and – and the, we can't even get 925 through, right. I, I guess we have to bring these things forward. And I guess even if they're not going to pass because we're really heavy red state or whatever, it these are the people that are the future of the party. And we have to keep these people engaged. We can't write them off and go back to establishment politics. Um, th that's not working either. Absolutely. Uh, and we've seen how... How just just how frustrated people across the country are, and it you know, it is amazing where you're at that Bernie Sanders won over sixty percent of the county. That's amazing. Um, and the, so the the state the, the presidential state, sorry caucus. the state yep. Yep. <laughs> yeah I'm, I'm uh, Hillary only took two districts that was yeah it. and out of forty seven yeah and so I mean that's that's a pretty big deal. You know, especially when Hike Campus, of course, was for uh, Dapple, uh, which was something that had a lot of people. A lot of people were pissed, um, me included. I'm sure you included. Um, did Did you actually spend time uh, around Dapple? Um, I okay. Like I say, I'm a wildland firefighter. Last year, I did six out of state fire dispatches. Mm -hmm. um, they're all three week commitments, hundred hour weeks away from home. I did do a uh, sit in on a panel with um, a few other progressive Democrats. Um, y you might know who Chase Iron Eyes is, mm -hmm. uh, but among them was Ruth Buffalo for insurance commissioner, uh, Marlo Hunt. She was running for PSC, a Standing Rock uh, uh, resident, and um, uh, Tom Asbridge and uh, David Gibbs. And we said that it's time for the nonpartisan league to come back and, and promote a North Dakota product. Um, not only did you have the Dapple uh, destruction of sacred sites, mm -hmm. uh, which the PSC did end up finding them for one, which, I mean, they could have did a lot more. But um, you're, you're losing out on any shot at long-term work in North Dakota. You're, you're promoting the fact that this oil is going to be shipped overseas. Um, right. There were so many false misinformations on, on the whole project. And, and I did visit the camp. I, I only made it down there one time. I went through the police checkpoint and all that stuff. And, um, it, it was very nice in September at the time that I went down mm -hmm. and, um, I, I applauded the effort. Um, I wish that there could have been more organization mm -hmm. because in North Dakota, believe it or not, we do not have voter registration. Um, we're the only state that doesn't have it, and technically, all those folks that were down there could have changed their ID to a North Dakota ID, and they all could have came in and voted for uh, progressive candidates. And I, I guess that my biggest issue was the Standing Rock or Sioux County, I guess it would be, only put out 900 votes. And, and I think we really need to reach out to these people and, and mm -hmm. let them know that, that hey, that there, there are people that want change. Um, that there's so many people that just don't engage and realize who's actually running. 
Um, I did a lot of a uh, door knocking up in Fort Berthold and you wouldn't believe how many people on the Fort Berthold reservation did not realize that there were nine Native American candidates who ran on the Denman PL last year. Wow. So uh, tell me a bit about the, the NPL, because this is something that's new to me. I'm, I'm not anywhere near close to knowing a lot about North Dakota politics. So just explain what the what the nonpartisan league is. Okay, so real quickly, um, we could have an entire segment on this, but the Nonpartisan League was a group started by uh, Arthur C. Towley in around 1918. Mm -hmm. um, he was a organizer for the Socialist Party of America, and they fired him, and he laughed as he walked out the door, and he <laughs> went and created this group called the Nonpartisan League. Mm -hmm. um, he was able to shrink both parties the Democrats and the Republican Party at the time. And he was able to do that through, uh, I believe it was $3 contributions, which, I mean, is obviously a little different with inflation nowadays. Right. But uh, a similar model that, that you may be aware of. And um, what they did was they, they created things. Sorry about that. They created things like a state-owned bank, the only one in the entire nation. Wow. And what that bank does is offers right now the lowest student rate, lowest student interest rate in the entire country. Um, they created a state-owned elevator and mill. And the reason why they created these three things is because the corporations were running the show and, and the, the farmers weren't getting paid for their grain properly. Um, they, they didn't have a safe place to keep their money because of uh, uh, corporate banks and, and things like that. So they said, you know what? We need to band together and we need to create these uh, state-owned options. Now, mm -hmm. they didn't force anybody to use the bank. They didn't force anybody to use these elevators, but they used them because it was the right thing and it was the best option out there at the time. Now, you mentioned that Sioux County, only 900 people came out to vote. So I, I want to ask you um, what message you would give to people who right now have, have sort of given up on the political system and who are not turning out to vote. Uh, what message would you give for them to, to try to get them out? Um, well, uh, we need folks to step up. Right now, there's no organization on that uh, district as well, District 31 within the Dem NPL. Mm -hmm. um, really, we need to get through to the uh, people in charge that they they have to reach out to these people. They have to put, put some of their efforts into advertisement, into uh, uh, f finding out who's interested, um, but as far as a message, I mean, it's, it's, it's time to take back our, our state and our, our party and our, our country for that matter. Um, if, if you're, you're not impressed with the way things are going, um, not voting is the worst thing you can do. And really what I'm trying to do is, is get people to realize that even voting is not enough anymore. Right. Um, we have to go to our conventions. We have to, uh, help with the platform. We, we have to door knock, we have to phone bank, we have to uh, uh, donate uh, $27 if you can. Mm -hmm. um, we, we have to do these things because if we don't do them, no one else is going to do them. Um, if, if not me, who? And, and people right. really need to start asking themselves that. And right now, there is a six-person challenge, I believe, to Dave Archambault for the tribal chairman position. So I think that in itself could get some people to uh, uh, get involved and, and maybe we can bring them into the Dem NPL and say, hey, uh, w would you also like to help with the District 31 race, which is going to happen this year? Because we, we can't just let the Republicans walk straight through like they've been doing in these rural areas. So so really, it's about uh, not me, us. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. All right. Um, so how can people help out with your campaign? Um, well, right now, um, we're, we're kind of under construction with our web page and stuff. Uh, right now, I'm asking people to go to uh, Dustin Pyre for United States Senate Nonpartisan League on Facebook. Um, connect with me that way. Um, uh, people are asking how to donate and where they can. And, and honestly, Jeff, like I was not uh, expecting this big of a, a base right out the gate. Mm -hmm. um, I announced April 20th at my marijuana rally, and since then it's been incredible. Um, I have a campaign manager who has come out of nowhere, uh, Joey Peltier, who is doing an incredible job. And and really, it's 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 about um, people that have never done anything before. What what can I do? 
just just reach out to me on Facebook. Um, go talk to your neighbors, um, and and see what we can get behind. But we're also trying to form uh, ballot initiative committees to bring forward direct democracy for things that the uh, Republican supermajority in our state doesn't agree with, like uh, fair WSI for emergency responders, um, police and fire unions, uh, the fight for 15, which is a pretty long debate here in North Dakota, um, uh, marijuana reform Mm -hmm. that includes uh, expunging previous criminal records. And and I think that's going to speak volumes to itself because – we can't be playing lip service anymore either. I mean, I can sit here all day and tell you I'm for marijuana reform, but when I actually get on a ballot initiative committee and go and collect the signatures to do it, and you walk into the voting booth and see that, I, I think that's going to have an impact on its own, and, and we need to find people that are willing to help with these issues. I've never been a politician. Um, my campaign slogan is send calloused hands to Washington. Um, we, we need to get the working people uh, involved and and if you you know if you can't run for office that's fine, but uh, we need to get people to to understand like I say that when 40% of the state does not vote, uh, that's that's a problem. That that means yeah. that we don't have a country or a state of and by and for the people. Um, we have a a, a a political atmosphere that is uh, funded by big interests and and stuff you see on TV. And, and all that, and, and that's what swings elections. There were multiple district elections that could have easily went the other way yeah. with a little bit of help from the progressive uh, 64%. Right, and it, it's just a matter, I think, of, of just you know being able to reach out to them and, 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 and get your message across and to be able to find them. You know, I mean, these people, they're there, but sometimes it's hard to reach them. But And this is I think this is a pattern throughout the entire country. I think... America is a lot more progressive than we give it credit for. It's just that we're so spread out and we're kind of hard to find until you have that single rallying call. And that, that call was Bernie Sanders. But, you know, you, you and I, by the way, we're, we're both working guys. I mean, before I did this, I worked in the factories and, you know, you're, you're a firefighter, which is awesome. <laughs> I and mean, that's amazing. Um, and so, you know, like we know what it's like to be in the community, to talk to the community, to get to know the people, to see their concerns, to feel those concerns yourself. You know what I mean? It's, it's so important, like you said, to get people into office who understand those concerns, who are not cut off, and especially who are not influenced by the big money in politics. So it, it is really awesome to see people like you that are starting to run for office uh, on, on that, not just because of Bernie Sanders, but just the 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 policies, the platform itself. All right. Uh, again, thank you so much for your time, man. There's so many people in my chat that, that want to know how to help you out. And so, um, let's let, okay. So let's do this. Um, when you get all the, the fundraising stuff set up, I want you to come back on and we'll, we'll have a discussion on how to, how to help out your campaign and, uh, see what we can do. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. Because I'm not, I'm not taking any, uh, large corporate corporation money. donations and right. and none of that stuff. You know, yeah. I'm I'm funded by the people. And and right now I'm in Lytton, North Dakota. It's a town of about 1,200 people, mm-hmm. and I'm at a parade. And and that's kind of what it's going to have to take. I mean, and and if people in North Dakota want to help, I mean, even if I can't be there, walk through your local parade and and say, hey, uh, hire for Senate, uh, pack the convention. That's what we're pushing. Because if we get these 64 percent to come to convention. Um, and I take convention, that means that Heidi Heitkamp has to go and collect 300 signatures to get in the primary. And uh, that's kind of the momentum we're looking for right now. Um, that's going to make so, national news, too. Yeah, I, I believe so as well. Um, she's uh, in the pocketbooks of the same people that are given to John Hoven and Kevin Kramer. Mm-hmm. I mean, Hoven's over $2.5 million and Kramer's uh, somewhere around $1.8 million. And... Uh, Heidi just passed the million dollar mark and and Democrats are proud of that and yeah it's yeah. great fundraise but um, when that money is coming from super PACs that literally give to anybody mm-hmm. uh, that's not right I mean I'm, I'm sure I could go out and get all kinds of money if I wanted but that's that's not what I'm about right and and, and you know I, I assume some of that money would likely be coming from oil companies as well that she's collecting so 
things like uh, Trans Canada and the other yeah, companies she, that she Apple. has expressed repeated support for Keystone Pipeline, yeah, which is a pipeline again that's not gonna put our uh, dependence on foreign oil. Last I checked, Canada is a foreign country, um, right. but then, but then she'll okay, so she'll support Canadian oil coming into the country, and she'll support our uh, efforts when we go to war with can not war with Canada, but on their team and as far as the United Nations and whatnot. Mm -hmm. But we're not good enough for their prescription drugs. Yeah, I know. And it's 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 things like that that people, new progressives coming into the party are are pressing her on. Um, I put out a video about her stance on uh, Medicare for all, Medicaid for all, mm -hmm. and she thinks that we need to we need to uh, fix Obamacare and and keep working within that system and I can tell you that the people in North Dakota are not impressed when big government comes in and forces them to do something and then takes their tax dollars and gives it to the corporations right and then you you wonder why the corporations turned around and raised the prices on everything uh, two three four hundred percent I mean it's it's yeah. not good man and and Jeff I'll say one more thing um, According to the FEC rules, I can receive under $50 donations. Um, I can receive them by mail or in person. So if you would like to, if you really would like to donate, um, please again go to Pyre for United States Senate on Facebook, uh, Nonpartisan League, and I will uh, make sure to get you my address and a way to uh, connect with my campaign manager to receive those donations and, and make sure they're put to good use so I can continue to uh, venture around the state and, and find these progressives and speak with them. We can, uh, we can throw that, uh, that address in the, in the description box of this uh, video. So that we're going to put up on YouTube. So, okay. So everybody uh, in North Dakota, man, if you want a progressive, this guy, this guy's it, this guy's a real deal. So check him out. Uh, Dustin Pyre on Facebook. All right, thanks. Uh, thanks a lot, man, for uh, joining me again, and uh, best of luck in your campaign. I hope you come back when you've got all that stuff, uh, when you've got the website and stuff up, and the donations. We'll have another discussion uh, on how you know how best you can defeat Heidi Heitkamp, bring progressive values to North Dakota. Absolutely, and, and thank you, Jeff for having me on. I appreciate it, and um, yeah, we're. The, the more people that come out and let me know that they have a problem with Heidi Heitkamp, the more fuel goes into the tank and uh, the, the more uh, the more we get the ball rolling. Like I say, we, we are working people. Um, we are a true grassroots movement. I can't uh, devote uh, my 100% of my time right now, but um, as, as things move forward, we're, we're going to be putting as much more effort as possible into this thing. So, Hey, everybody. Thanks for watching this video. If you want to see more like this, please hit the subscribe button below. And if you want to support truly independent progressive media, please consider becoming a patron at patreon.com slash TYTNation.